There you go. Wes didn't want to hear me this morning. Well, good morning, everyone. Clap and get out of here. Welcome to Emmanuel this morning. Welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. I'm Mindy Gopnauer, the pastor here, where we are seeking to build and grow relationships with the community in order to meet needs, proclaim the gospel, and develop faith. Thank you. Many of you have already asked how my trip uh, went to Chicago. It was a wonderful trip. I've learned a lot uh, from that experience and can't wait to share uh, a lot of that wisdom with you in the coming weeks ahead. Several announcements for you. We will not have a mission for the month of June. Um, for those of you who give to our monthly mission, uh, we will be focusing heavily on Vacation Bible School as we prepare for that, um, which is coming in July. So if you would like to um, financially support Vacation Bible School, you're welcome to do that. There will be a lot of ways in order to do that in the coming weeks. Um, and if you have any questions, you can talk to our children's director, uh, Jen Miliniak. Our church office will be closed tomorrow in observance of Memorial Day. Annual conference is this week, which is our annual gathering um, where we come together, uh, all of the United Methodist churches, in the Susquehanna Conference. Um, we worship together. We make decisions together. Um, all of that is coming this week, so I will be out of the office Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Carol Procope and I will be representing Emmanuel this week. Um, annual conference is held in Williamsport, and you can watch that. Uh, it is live streamed um, through the conference website. Next Sunday is our combined worship service, which means we will be worshiping at? Great job, everyone. 9.30. If you come at 8.45, you will be early, uh, which is fine. Um, you are welcome to come early if you need to keep on a schedule. That's all right. Uh, but we will be worshiping at 9.30, and we will be celebrating uh, the music ministry of our church together for Music Sunday. We now have t-shirts available for purchase. Ashley made a new um, order form, uh, so if you filled out last week's, you're good. Um, but we have a new one that is a little less confusing, so um, that is out in the hallway. And what the shirts look like are also out in the hallway um, so that you can check those out. We will be uh, starting a summer Bible study on June the 11th at 10 a.m. on 1 Corinthians. It will be a six-week study, um, and there is a book involved with that, so I encourage you to sign up for that. Again, the sign-up sheets are out in the hallway. We are still looking for some volunteers for... Um, sound and PowerPoint. So if you are interested in maybe learning a new skill or uh, helping with worship in these capacities, we could use your help um, as we uh, look to grow our ministries. So the sign-up sheets are in the hallway. Um, with all the other sign-up sheets, I encourage you to check those out. And if you have questions, please let us know. Our um, summer, in, summer yard sale is coming up on June the 22nd, which is a bring your own stuff. Great job. Bring your own. You guys are really great at this participation today. Bring your own stuff. Take your own stuff home yard sale. Um, it will be indoor and outdoor. You can sign up for spots in either location. That sign up sheet is in the hallway. Um, you, if you have questions, Patty Beasley can answer those questions for you. And uh, we will be having our large indoor yard sale in November. So hold on to your yard sale stuff if you don't sell it on the 22nd. And we'll be starting to collect that sometime in September. I think that is all of my announcements for you this morning. This is perfect. This is great. Everything is going to work perfectly. The coral, the octopus, the coral, the background. I can see it now. The video. Uh, hey, Jen. Hey. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? What are you... Whoa, the choir's here. It's Saturday, right? No, no, it's Sunday. I'm uh, worship. I, I preach here. I don't know if you... Well, that's fine. In, in that case, I'm so glad I have everybody's attention. We have got so much going on this summer in this church. And one of the most exciting parts about it is Bible school is coming up. It's right around the corner, July 21st through the 25th. And I need your help in so many ways. Trust me. Prayer... Prayer, yes, prayer, lots of prayer. Prayer for the kids we're going to interact. Prayer for our volunteers. Prayer for our staff. 
prayer is that this church is ready to welcome kids from our community on a scuba adventure, an adventure to dive into friendship with God. And that's where you come in. I know everybody in this room is able to pray for us. If you want to help in other ways, <laughs> I'm looking for volunteers who want to work with the kids. Maybe you want to work in the kitchen. Maybe you want to help us get the space ready. We need help. There will be a donation board out in the lobby to, starting today and carrying through till the end of June. If you'd like to take a sea creature, there will be supplies on it that you can easily purchase. There will also be an Amazon QR code that you could scan and buy purchases straight from Amazon. And then if you want to help in any other way, feel free to see me after this service, hanging out in my office, or give me a call or shoot me an email if you'd like to help. Thank you, guys. And if you want to wear a shark costume, we can make that happen, too. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for laughter. We give you thanks for time together in this space. And may we continue to sense your spirit, which we know is already here. May all that we have prepared this morning, our music, our words, our presence, may it all be honoring and pleasing to you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As you are comfortably able, would you please stand and join us on the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is our strength and our song. He has become our victory. You, you are, are our God and, and we, we will, will praise, praise you. you. You are our God and we will exalt you. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good. good. His faithful love endures forever. And will you join with me in singing Blessed Assurance number 369. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation.
Let us pray. Loving God, giver of all light and life, you sent Jesus Christ into the world, not to condemn, but to save. Help us to lift up the light of Christ so that the world might believe in him and receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus of the world. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things. No one has ever gone to heaven but returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. Here endeth the reading of the scripture. Good and gracious God, may you wake us up to your voice that we would listen, that we would hear your word, and that we would respond by faithfully following after you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Growing up, I was terrified of the dark, which is really probably an understatement. I couldn't sleep if it was completely dark. I made my parents keep the bathroom light on all night for a really, really long time. I wouldn't walk up the stairs if the lights weren't on in the hallway. There was something about the dark that I just couldn't get comfortable with. One time, a friend of ours was living at our house, and we had all gone out for the evening. My mom and I came home first, and we were sitting in the living room, and I could hear something upstairs. Now, we came home at dinner time, so it was dark outside and inside, too. Now, I refused to go upstairs, and I was probably like 18, 19 years old. I refused to go upstairs because it was dark, and I was afraid. We debated for quite a while on what could possibly be going on upstairs. Now, my mom didn't volunteer to go upstairs either. I'll just add that to the story. Until our family friend walked into the light of the downstairs and revealed that it was he who was making the noise, trying to be funny, he thought. The light revealed the darkness, what was in the darkness. That is part of Nicodemus' story, too, which we hear from John 3 this morning. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, one of the religious leaders who didn't understand what Jesus was doing and why he was wasting his time with sinners. However, Nicodemus actually heard the words of Jesus, and he wanted to know more. 
but we also hear the skepticism of Nicodemus as he approached Jesus at night in the darkness so nobody could see him. He had questions, but he didn't want the other Pharisees to know. Nicodemus was a part of the in crowd of the day, and he was risking his social status to inquire more about Jesus. What risks are you taking to follow Jesus? We all risk something to follow Jesus. Status, comfort, what is familiar, etc. Following Jesus is risky, and yet people still come curious to encounter him. Nicodemus certainly did. The risk of being seen didn't keep Nicodemus from coming to Jesus. Something drew him in. Something compelled him to want to know more, to seek Jesus out. Jesus revealed what Nicodemus had been searching for in the dark of night. We often talk about the broken or the outsiders that Jesus encountered and changed. We talked during the season of Lent about Matthew and his tax collector friends. The Pharisees questioned why Jesus was spending his time with such notorious sinners. And Jesus did a lot of that. He spent the majority of his time with the most broken and sinful people. People who knew that they were in need of forgiveness. But Jesus also transformed those who previously thought of themselves as righteous. We mostly hear Jesus call out and correct the Pharisees for their attitudes and beliefs. But some of them heard Jesus' message. Jesus is for everyone, not just for those who know they need him, but for those who aren't yet aware of their need for Jesus. The light of Jesus illuminates the darkness for all people. And if we are honest, that illumination is not always easy. What in your life needs to be illuminated by the light of Jesus. Nicodemus pursued the light, Jesus. He wanted to know more, to understand. And it was a lot to take in all at once. Jesus revealed what Nicodemus needed, and it took some time for Nicodemus to process. Jesus said to Nicodemus, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? Nicodemus exclaimed. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? In Nicodemus's defense, that's a good question. Grown adults can't physically be born again. So what on earth does Jesus mean? This is part of the transformation that takes place when we come out of the dark and into the light of Jesus. Nicodemus's mind had to be changed along with his heart. He had to begin to comprehend the extent of what Jesus was able to do and what Jesus was about. Nicodemus only understood on a very basic level. Jesus goes on to tell Nicodemus that in order to understand the kingdom of God and heavenly things, Nicodemus has to have faith in Jesus. He has to believe in what he cannot see. That's not exactly an easy lesson to learn. Not for Nicodemus and not for us. We want proof. We want to see with our own eyes. And following Jesus requires faith and trust. It's a lesson that will transform Nicodemus's life, though. Presumably, Nicodemus leaves the scene with Jesus still remaining a Pharisee a religious leader who liked rules and questioned Jesus' authority. But we know that Nicodemus was changed by Jesus because we see him appear two more times in the Gospel of John. He had a lot more learning to do about faith and about trusting Jesus. And then Nicodemus shows up at the end of the Gospel of John helping to bury Jesus' body after the crucifixion. In the end, I think Nicodemus finally understood. He saw Jesus' words come to life. Nicodemus was a work in progress. 
Jesus transformed him, but the lessons took some time. Sound familiar? I think that it makes Nicodemus relatable. Because not every one of us is transformed all at one time. Some of us have to learn a lesson multiple times before it sticks. Some of us are skeptical, and we have to keep seeking more understanding. Jesus is able to transform each and every one of us, no matter how slowly we learn. No matter how long it takes for us to have a life-changing encounter with Jesus. Jesus is for the righteous and for the broken. And if we claim ourselves to be righteous, it may just take us a little longer to be transformed. In the dark, our true selves are not visible. When we encounter Jesus, we step into the light. And Jesus reveals what we need to surrender, let go of, repent of, and walk away from. As Jesus illuminates Nicodemus' darkness, he sheds light on what God was doing through Jesus. These words may sound familiar. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. The light of Jesus gives us life. It transforms our darkness and sets us free to live in the freedom of Christ. Nicodemus was transformed by the illumination that he had to be born again in Christ. That was the only way, it is the only way to have full access to God. Nicodemus had to learn to trust Jesus and that took time. What lesson is God teaching you right now that might transform your life? Jesus can transform us whether we feel broken and disconnected or righteous and proud. Your life, who you are right now, the decisions that you've made up till this point in your life do not disqualify you from being transformed by Jesus. Nobody, nobody is off limits. So let Jesus reveal. Let him reveal what you've been hiding in the dark so that your life may continue to be transformed by the light of Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus, for the light that he is to us and for us. May the light of Jesus shine in each of us that it would illuminate our darkness. We would surrender what we've been hiding so that we might more faithfully follow after you. Get with us this day we bring to you both our darkness, our brokenness, and also the things that weigh heaviest on our hearts. And we lift our pain to you, asking that you would heal our hearts, that you would work in our lives. Can we lift up Susie Herzog, who is still in the hospital, and we ask God that you would continue to pour out your healing as you have already done, that you would restore Susie's health. God, we lift up Lloyd Edwards, who had surgery this week, and we ask God that you would pour out your healing to be upon him. And we lift up Shane, who was Lauren Murphy's uncle, and we ask God that you would pour out your healing upon him with his diagnosis of cancer. And we lift up Marilyn Wheeler, who was admitted to the ER, and we ask God for your healing to be upon her. And we lift up Dottie Alibi's brother-in-law, Kermit, and we ask God that you would be with him as he's been hospitalized after a stroke. And for all of these people,
and all of those that we hold in our hearts, we surrender to you. God, may each person in each situation experience your healing, your presence, and your peace. And yet on this Memorial Day weekend, we take a moment here in this place to pause and to remember. We remember the sacrifices that have been made. We remember those who have given their lives that we might experience freedom here in this country. And for those sacrifices, God, we are deeply grateful. May we not forget what has been given so that we might experience life. And ultimately, God, we remember your sacrifice in Jesus that we might have eternal life with you. And God, for that gift, we are grateful. May we live as people of gratitude. And so God, as your people here in this place, we join our voices together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his faithful disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so, church, we are called not to just hear, but to act. And so I invite you this morning to seriously consider what are you hiding in the dark that Jesus needs to illuminate? I also invite you this morning to consider how you might give of your tithes and offerings, your gifts and resources, that in all ways and in all things you might honor God. So as we consider all of this, I invite you to stand as you are comfortably able to join your voices in singing the doxology. we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for every good and wonderful gift that you have given to us. And so God, as an act of faith here in this place, we offer a piece of what we have back to you. May you pour out your blessing upon our tithes and our gifts and our offerings. May they be honoring and acceptable to you, holy God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, would you remain standing uh, and join with me in singing uh, a song written by one of the founders of our tradition, uh, Charles Wesley, uh, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, allowing Jesus to illuminate the darkness in you. Go in peace. Amen. This little light of